Cisco recently released this field notice about secure LDAP. As of March 2020, Microsoft is going to require that LDAP integrations be secure. So instead of LDAP, they'll do LDAP-S. In this video, I'll show how to convert a Cisco Unified Communications Manager integration with LDAP to being an integration with LDAP-S. And I'll show how to do it without having to get access to the actual Active Directory server. And I'll also show how to do it without having to interact with those that do have the access. Typically people have to interact with the Windows servers because they need the certificate in order to upload it to the CUCM. But there's a little trick that you can do with collecting a packet capture and extracting the certificate from there. So I'll show how to do all of that in this video and we'll go ahead and jump into it now. So we'll start off in the CLI. You can see the command here is utils network capture and then there's some optional parameters that I put in. I say that I want all sizes and I want my count to be one and then a bunch of zeros. And then I say that I want to save all of the, the traffic to a file named get underscore LDAP underscore cert. That way I can actually analyze the packet capture in Wireshark later. Now that we have the capture started, we'll move over to the unified CM administration page and we'll go to the system menu and we'll navigate over to LDAP authentication. While we're here, notice that the fully qualified domain name of the AD is here. We'll talk more about that later when we look at the certificate. And we'll transition the port over to 636 and we'll say to use TLS, but we get this error. It's important to note that the error says certificate not verified. This is the error that we want to see. Let's go back to the CLI and stop the PCAP. And then we'll trans transition over to RTMT. We'll click the default, trace and log central, and then collect files. While on collect files, we'll move to the next page and we'll select packet capture logs. I'm going to select them for the publisher. And then I'll move to the last page and select relative range and put a time that I feel is appropriate. And then you can see here, I already have a directory for where to put the CUCM logs. And then I'll browse to that from RTMT. And once I've located that particular directory, I'll just choose the option to open it. And then I'll choose the option to delete the collected files from the server. And it wants me to confirm that. The reason I do that is because I don't want a packet capture on there that, that doesn't need to be there, you know, taking up disk space needlessly. So let's go ahead and move over to the packet capture. We'll apply this filter, which I'll put into the description of the video. And this filter will make it so that we have the packets that we want to look at. And then we'll expand some of the subtrees all the way down to where we actually can find the certificate. Notice that this matches the FQDN for what is listed as the LDAP server earlier in the, in the CUCM configuration. So we'll right click on the certificate and we'll choose export packet bytes. Then we'll give it a file name and notice that the file name ends in .cer and that it's saved as .raw. Now we can navigate over to the OS administration page on the CUCM. And once we log in, we want to go to security certificate management. And then once we're on to the certificate management page, we'll be able to choose the option to upload a certificate. We'll want to change the certificate purpose to Tomcat Trust. And then we'll browse to our certificate, which I have it here in this directory, and we'll click open and then upload. Upon upload, you can see that the status changes to certificate uploaded. And we want to get this command, util service restart Cisco Tomcat. Notice that the C and the T in Cisco Tomcat are capital. And we'll just paste this in here. Now it's going to go through a series of stopping, 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 
and then it'll eventually go back to starting, starting, starting. Um, then eventually it will say started. Now this can take a pretty good amount of time. I've edited the video to make it shorter, but it should take about 10 to 15 minutes, not only for the service to start, but also for you to be able to log back into the server. So even though the Tomcat service says that it's started, that doesn't mean you can log in just yet. So wait a minimum of 10 minutes. Probably you're better off waiting 15 minutes. You know, go look at emails, maybe work on a ticket or go get some, some water, get away from your desk maybe a little bit for a walk. But just give the server some time. And if you go to log into the server and you're not able to log in, give it a little bit more time. If you're getting upwards of the 20 minute mark or longer, then it's possible that you might be running into an issue. And you can see here it says, if the service has not restarted properly, execute the same command again. I wouldn't do that too many times. Um, if you're doing it two or three times, after that I'd say go ahead and engage Cisco TAC. Let's go back to the CM administration page. Now notice, it is the CM administration page as highlighted here, not OS admin. So now we'll go into system, LDAP, LDAP authentication, just like we did before. And we'll make the same modifications again. We'll change the port to 636 and we'll choose the option to use TLS. Now when we save it, we see the update was successful. That's because we've uploaded the certificate. Now we'll go to LDAP, LDAP directory. You'll notice in my LDAP configuration that I am also using the fully qualified domain name here as well. So once we scroll down here to the bottom, we'll change the LDAP port again to 636 and we'll choose the option to use TLS. And then we'll hit save. It tells us to perform a full synchronization. I'll do a perform full sync now. Don't forget to go through and check to make sure that your LDAP is still syncing properly. Maybe add a test user on the LDAP side to make sure that it is pulled over in the CUCM properly. And also make sure that your users are able to authenticate. Logging into Jabber, logging into the end user page, whatever it might be. Uh, just make sure that everything is working properly. I hope that you found some value in this video, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.